The Honourable Member from Hamilton Centre. This past weekend, I met with over 100 youth from Hamilton who told me they don't even know how they're going to be able to pay rent, let alone ever be able to afford to buy a home in their lifetime. And a recent Spectator News report confirms that Hamilton's rent is out of control and quickly outpacing Canadian cities. And under the Liberals' watch, life has only gotten better for wealthy developers. And they're raking it in... The Honourable... Uh Member oh. from Hamilton Centre, usually I can hear quite well. I'm having difficulty hearing him today. I'm going to ask all honourable members, in particular the member from Prince George Peace River, Northern Rockies, Zimmerman. to uh, only take the microphone when he's or take the floor when he's recognised by the speaker. I'm going to ask the honourable, uh, give the honourable member 20 seconds to finish uh, his question. The honourable member. Under the Liberals' watch, life has only gotten better for big money developers and they're raking it in while the rents double for Canadians. So why are the Liberals refusing to take on corporate developers and failing to build non-market affordable housing now? Yeah. Where's his Palestinian scarf? Order. You didn't bring it today? The Honourable Member, for, uh, the Honourable Minister, rather, for Housing, Infrastructure and Communities. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I have great respect for the Honourable Member and thank him for his advocacy to build more homes in Hamilton. But he may not be aware that we recently invested $93.5 million in his city to help speed up the construction of up to 9,000 new homes. Mr. Speaker, in addition, we are putting money on the table that's going to help speed up the development. But if his concern is about building non-market housing, I'm pleased to point to the billion dollars we invested in the fall economic economic statement to build more affordable housing. The hundreds of millions we're building, using to build more cooperative housing. The four billion dollars we're using to deal with the needs of urban, rural and northern uh, communities to serve indigenous peoples. We're going to build housing for the most vulnerable. We're going to build housing for everyone. I don't know who everyone is because it's certainly not Mr. for Speaker, every person. Mr. Speaker, indigenous people in Winnipeg make up nearly 75 percent of the unhoused population. Almost 90 percent are sleeping outdoors or living in encampments. The Liberals' inadequate response is costing lives. And the Conservative leader, he cut 8,000 affordable units when he was the minister in charge. Clearly not a Conservative priority. In today's budget, will the Liberals commit to increasing funding for affordable housing with rent geared to income and get serious about ending homelessness? The Honourable Minister for Housing, Infrastructure and Communities. Mr. Speaker, I thank the Honourable Member for her concern and she's right to point out the desperate need of so many communities across country when it comes to building more affordable housing. She's right to point out the need for increased investment to support the needs of Indigenous people who remain unhoused. That's why we put more than $4 billion on the table to support the needs of Indigenous peoples in community and an additional $4.3 billion to deal with the needs of Indigenous peoples who live in urban, rural and northern environments. On top of that, Mr. Speaker, we've invested more than $120 million to build thousands of homes in her city. We're going to keep doing what we need to build more affordable housing. And one point of correction, it was 800,000 units that the opposition leader lost while he was housing minister. Didn't you lose a million people? Mr. Speaker, after eight years, it's clear this NDP Liberal government is not worth the cost. In Newfoundland and Labrador, there are 28 bodies in a freezer outside of a hospital because their families can't afford to bury them. This sounds like a Netflix horror movie, but sadly, <laughs> it is the nightmare of this prime minister's out of We're not supposed to have Netflix. Conservatives demand him to stop. Stop the outrageous spending and make life affordable. Will they listen and give Canadians the ability to bury their loved ones? The Honourable Minister for Rural Economic Development. Mr. Speaker, we know it's challenging time for many, many people. That's why we've been there all along, Mr. Speaker. We've been there with the child care benefit. We've been there with the increased OIS and GIS. We're now there with a dental program that's rolling out to help people. We know we have our carbon rebate this year for people. We know it's challenging times. We'll be there for Canadians, and we always will be, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member from King Vaughan. The old song is, Stop in the Name of Canadians! 28 bodies in a freezer because families can't afford to bury their loved ones. Houses have doubled. Food bank usage is higher in history. Well, you know. Families <laughs> enough. Today, the Liberals are announcing their budget. I love this. Some compassion and ensure there's a dollar of savings for every dollar of spending. So Canadians can afford to live. 
she's still got some lungs. Before the Honourable Minister gets up, I'm going to encourage uh, members, please. I, I hear some singing in the House. You know that singing is not permitted in the House. I'll just ask them to please... Very challenging and very upsetting time in their life. They know that this party on this side of the House is there to help them for all many... In many what many reasons. And actual we F believe in does she have around her neck? People, ...which we have been since a very, very beginning, and we will continue to, especially with today's budget later today. Thank Looks you. like my headphones, my string headphones when I put them in my pocket.